a lot of the uh, footage that would have been shown in the thing you're talking about would probably look like a lot of bloopers. So <laughs> <laughs> trial and error. So yeah. But um, one thing I did want to touch on and go back, I forgot to mention is um, you did bring up Elias and the whole graveyard scene mm -hmm. um, with that and uh, how that got cut from, it got cut from part six, Tom McLaughlin, who wrote director part six was originally going to put that on there. And, um, and we were all fans of six um, and Tom. And if you, if you didn't realize or notice, a lot of people don't, when we reached out to Tom McLaughlin, who helped us quite a bit um, in some of our planning and uh, storytelling and also in the post-production and was a great consultant. And he also played the gravekeeper in that opening scene. And so he originally wrote that scene and meant to film it and, and he didn't get the opportunity to film it. So it was quite amazing uh, when we reached out and asked him if he'd play the gravekeeper in that scene. Um, Cause this is a sequel to part six yeah. where we pick up, you know, 30 years after part six and part six was supposed to end with that scene. So we thought what better way to start this than with that scene that that one should have ended with and, and bring Tom McLaughlin back into it. So it was a really cool moment to have CJ on set, Tom on set, have us there and all kind of geeking out. And, um, and I know our director, Jeremy Brown was really excited and, and was talking about it there, but having, having that cast there to film that scene that's historic that a lot of the fans just know of the storyboards are out online from that time, you know, and, and do that. So, and to recreate that. And even Tom McLaughlin himself came in and, and he was saying, um, how, how amazing it was to do that scene. So, um, so yeah, it was a pretty cool moment for Tom as well. He was pretty excited to film the scene. He's like, no, nowhere in my life did I realize that 30 years later I'd be able to do this. So we were honored to have him in that. He's such a nice guy. I got to talk to him. He's going to come on here in a couple of weeks and uh, talk. Jason lives, and I'll have to I have to ask him a few questions about this too now. Um, oh, definitely. That, that totally slipped past me. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm ashamed to admit it, but that cameo totally slipped past me when I watched well, it. That attention to detail that makes this movie Article so was, um, interesting. You know, Jeremy Brown, uh, again, the director. He he really wanted to give it that part six feel that 80s vibe where that's the that was the time that we loved these slasher films and how can we make it in today's era but still give that vibe of uh of the 80s that yeah definitely love cgi it. tends to ruin a couple of these remakes it's just the, the practical effects are what made these movies interesting as, as far as i'm concerned and I feel a lot of movies just go go the cheap way by doing cgi and it's just not doesn't they're not the same texture to it the perfect example of that i want to see if y'all agree with me about this is like ghostbusters 1984 with practical versus ghostbusters 2016 which was all cgi um that's i look at that and the the stuff in the 84 ghostbusters i would love to see that in like a in like the new ghostbusters coming out next year i'd be okay with that but they just went all in with cgi <laughs> did not feel like you know ghostbusters um and if when these slasher movies go for that and you can just tell it's like cgi blood splattering and stuff it's this it, it takes you out of it and it's just it feels fake uh yeah. i felt the nightmare on elm street remake did that, that really first badly experience with the friday the 13th film uh growing up oh my very first experience with the friday the 13th film was probably when I was about 14 years old. Um, you know, of course, so growing up with the name Jason, you know, you get teased a little bit in school um, on Friday the 13th. But um, so I avoided it for a little while for that reason. But then when I was about 14 years old, we went ahead and rented one of the VHSs um, and then brought it home. And, and I was excited to go see Jason and it was part one. So it was a little bit disappointing for me yeah. as, a, as a young teen to be looking for Jason and not see it. So I didn't have the appreciation I should have um, at that age going in with the, the mindset I had. So, and then um, it was part six was the next one. I, so I went back to try again and part six was my, my entry in. So that was um, really great. And it was fun. I loved the comedy of it. Um, I love, I, I grew up a little bit sheltered, so I didn't have a lot of horror in my life and, uh, and a lot of movies in that. So, um, a little bit nervous going in to watch it, but then seeing the, the comedy and the balance in there really made made me love it. So 
then I went ahead and started watching the others um, as I could and, and, op and opening up my mind to more horror movies. So, um, and including like Nightmare on Elm Street, which I started to love as well, because it also has that humor element and a lot of those. So yeah, that was, that's how I kind of got started in the, in that genre. I, I in that franchise, how, I should say. Yeah. I, I can see how part six would get you more into it than part one. Because part one yeah. is a classic. I'm never going to put it down. But compared to the rest of the series, it is quite, it's, it's more boring. You know, uh, it, it's not the first time you see it. You know, the first time you see it and you don't know what's going to happen, it's fun. But after that, you know, it's, you know, once mm -hmm. you get into the other ones, you know, it's Jason, you, you know, you know what, and it's okay. You can watch those over and over again. But the first one, it's all about the who done it, and you already know. Mm -hmm. So it just, you know, but it, it's got its place and it, and it kick started everything. So, Absolutely. You know, my name's Joshua, and I came that close to having the curse you grew up with. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that was, that was going to be Jason's name. Uh, found that out later in life. I was like, damn it, you know? I wouldn't so mind it. <laughs> yeah, I was wanting to get your uh, thoughts on the more uh, strange Jason movies. Uh, Jason Goes to Hell, Jason X, Freddy versus Jason. Yeah, so with, with those... I remember going to the theater to see Jason X um, with my other, my best friend at the time, whose also name was Jason. <laughs> but we, uh, we went to go see Jason X together and it was fun. It was just kind of like, I mean, we both were kind of sitting there like, wait, what, what the hell is this? <laughs> you know, like suddenly there, and there wasn't a lot of um, press on it at the time. There wasn't a lot of previews. So I didn't really see much of anything going into it. Um, and so it was my first time not seeing a preview or anything. And, then when I uh, watched it, it was like, what is going on? It, you know, suddenly there's the Uber Jason. He's all chromed out and blacked out. And, but uh, it still had that campiness and um, some of the, the comedy and the kills. And it doesn't take itself seriously all the time, which I appreciate. So, um, so I thought it had some fun kills. And it was a good time and good to see the character back on screen. Um, but we also, him and I, uh, he worked for a radio station. And we were, it was able to get some press, press screening passes for some movies and he got them for Freddy versus Jason. Okay. So he and I went down there. Um, and then the part game. nine, it's got some amazing kills. Um, I wish it was Jason doing the kills. I have, yeah. a, I have a hard time letting go of that. Um, but there's some really, really great kills in there and some really great content. So uh, I have nothing but respect for Adam Marcus who um, had that in his hands and, and made that movie. Um, and did uh, what he did with it. I know the limitations that were put on him at the time and um, how the franchise wanted to take uh, everything. So um, it's, it's still a fun film that's liked by a lot of people. And so it's getting and a, little, a great thing. It's getting a lot more respect these days than it did, you know, upon its oh, release. Yeah. Uh, it is. People looking, I'm going to, I'm going to have to ask Adam about the uh, whole shaving scene. That's one of the only things that, oh, throws, no. uh, you know, but I'm sure he'll be, he'll be, He'll be all right with answering that. Uh, he made a really awesome movie called Secret Santa a couple years ago. Uh, if you haven't seen that, you should check that one out, both of you. It's a, it's a really good movie. Uh, all right. But, yeah, so Jason X, it got released via Torrance like a year, Sean. Was it a year? I think so. No. Huh? I, said, I think so. Yeah, it was like released on the Internet like a year before it hit theaters. Mm -hmm. And I knew about that, and I purposely avoided uh, downloading it or whatever, because I wanted to see it in theaters, because it was going to be the first Jason movie I ever got to see in theaters, period. Um, later on, I got to see a part three of uh, Midnight Showing in 3D, and that was pretty fun, even though I don't really care for that movie. That's a whole other can of worms. Um, but, Sean, uh, you got some questions for our guest? Yeah, um... What is this doing? Doing this kind of movie. What does this really um, inspire you to do next? Like, what what is next for you? Yeah. So, um, coming out of, I mean, really, when I started this, it just came from a desire to play the character. I've always wanted to play the character. Um, I played him. I played Jason at a local haunted house, volunteering my time there to raise some money for um, Shriner's Children's Hospital and um, everything. So I'd already kind of played him that way, but. I just really wanted to play the character. And then once I did and got my opportunity to do that, it just got really exciting to work, you know, full feature um, doing that. And from that, 
I have made so many connections, um, met so many people, amazing people, and have come across amazing opportunities where they, these other companies have seen me perform as Jason. Um, we've had some talks about some other amazing potential opportunities to play other creatures or characters in the future on some projects. Um, wish I could mention them, um, but it's it just to open this whole new door. Um, and in the meantime, uh, there's a couple other uh, fan films. Uh, so you, you mentioned the Jason versus Freddy versus Ash comic book and right. all that. There's a there's a, a movie, a short called um, Nightmare on Elm Street Up All Night. And it's written by Matt Shaw, um, a well-known writer in the UK and directed by Jeremy Brown, who, who did Vengeance. And, um, and if you haven't seen that, check it out. I've got a part in there. Um, my character, Louie, from Vengeance, the hillbilly um, yeah. that I played in there, he, he makes an appearance back in here. Um, so it's a short movie, yeah. It's, it's wonderful to see night. that the fan films actually broadcast as well as they do because I know with a lot of my friends there's this negative stigma around seeing a fan film because if it's not released to theaters, is it really a good film? And what gets me is that fan films allow more creativity because there's a lot of licenses with certain movies and products to where you can't you can't do your dream with it so that that makes the fan films and it's not that the fan films don't go anywhere a lot of the fan films are portfolios for the actors the people that did makeup the people that did music they can showcase their ability so they could rise higher up the chain so i feel that when i see a fan film i just, I just want to tell everyone about it i, I want to just Shout it. Shout it to everyone to just watch this and spread the word because it is fantastic. Just because it's a fan film doesn't mean it's a bad film. And I, I don't, I, I hate that it's like that. Oh, sure. And like this one, it was made with people who would have made a, a, a real film like Mick Strong, who we all know from the Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4, Blade, Leatherface, um, Candyman. He was our assistant director and production designer on this. You know, Tom McLaughlin being a part of this and several other professionals like this easily could have been um, funded by a bigger company or something, you know, was with and having some of the same, same people working on it. So it's just because of the licensing issue, you know, you put the right. fan film title on there and, um, and there's some other amazing fan films that are going on. And, and like you said, the creativity is not as stifled. You're not answering to certain people who, uh, who want to maybe change something to market it more towards a broader audience or a new younger audience. So you just get to really, do um what I know it's what a strange you want question, but i ask this yeah. anybody, that, anybody that, that's played jason i gotta ask this because there's instances like in jason lives jason could have wiped out that entire bunk of children uh you know just and and it feels like the second time he burst in there it's more to bait the woman than it is to get the kids you know because he has all these chances. He doesn't do it. Kane, uh, and then in part eight, you know, Kane didn't want to kick the dog, so that's not what Jason would do. So, uh, your thoughts on Jason Voorhees uh, and and innocence? I and I agree with Kane. I think that um, I think myself that Jason wouldn't kick a dog or hurt the dog or animal or children. You know, and so and I would also I he leaves that, that from Michael Myers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I took that. Um, as note too, when I was thinking about who my Jason is, is um, who did who did the predecessors before me? You know, people who played it before. What did they define him as? And I wanted to respect that. I don't want to change, you know, something that's been established. But I also believe that, you know, when he when Jason died as a young child, he was innocent. You know, and um, and we kind of touch on that in Vengeance a little bit, but like kind of how that transition happened. He wasn't um, an evil child necessarily, but got back fought brought back from the dead, you know, and then, um, and then started, um, it started from that point. So I think that he still has that soft spot for the children, which we also kind of explore at the end of vengeance, um, and, and kind of touch on. And then same thing with animals, you know, animals are innocent unless he was being, if he was being attacked by an animal, I could see yeah. and doing something, but if it was a, a dog or domesticated animal, then I would say no, for sure. 